Today on Searching for History, we're taking a quick look at my hometown, Centralia, Washington. Actually has quite a bit of history here. A uh, pretty magnificent main street with kind of turn of the century, you know, the last century buildings. So let's check it out. So this is the, the Fox Theater behind me. I don't know exactly when it was constructed. We'll have to look that up. This started out as a theater with a stage and an orchestra pit, and it has a balcony. For a while, it, it, it got converted into a three cinema. So they turned the balcony into two theaters and then there was the main one below but now it's been restored and that's all been removed but they're they're in the process of doing a complete restoration of the entire theater and they're putting it back to more or less its original condition so it'd be great to get in there but it's not going to happen today I like the architectural details here. The leaf pattern and then the, the scroll work going along the top. Yeah, it looks like they're emptying this building out. Yeah, turn it into something. Look at those beautiful floors. See now these buildings here yeah. are kind of have a cool architectural features to them. These windows that protrude out. So what this is army surplus. Mm Oh, I've been in here too. This bookstore. I like this one. How oh, it goes on Bill Street. I didn't even know people did, still did mosaic artwork. I like the painting of the two rabbits. Oh, I like this, these crystal glasses. So the city of Centralia was founded by George Washington. It's an early African-American pioneer settled here, founded the town in 1875. He was admired for his generosity. During hard times, he never repossessed property. And during the panic of 1893, he went to Portland and bought rice, flour, and sugar by the ton to help feed the poor. When George died at 88, his funeral was the largest ever held in Centralia. Mm 
It's Central Park. It's a lot smaller than the one in New York. <laughs> yeah, considerably smaller. <laughs> like a thousand times smaller. The refined man. Men's fine grooming. Ooh. So when I was a kid, the Gibson House, I loved this place because it was kind of a bookstore knick-knacky place, right. but upstairs in the bookstore part, they sold Dungeons and Dragons books. Yeah. And it was the only place in town you could get something like that. That sounds fun. So I loved coming here. But they turned this place into a pub some years ago. I particularly like this next street we're going to walk down. It's uh, East Magnolia Street. It still has the brick, which is pretty cool. So we'll take a look at that. It's a Masonic building. So across the street here is the Lewis Clark Hotel. Today it's apartments, but originally it was the biggest hotel in Centralia and uh, it has a pretty ornate interior. I don't think we can get inside. We'd have to come back in the afternoon. We can only get in through the office and it, the office is open in the afternoon. It's pretty cool though. You can still see the original tin ceiling of the entrance here. The Lewis and Clark Hotel was built in 1927. The hotel was the largest and most luxurious hotel between Seattle and Portland. So this is a pretty cool building. If you look at the features, you have the scroll work, the clock there in the middle, more scroll work, and then garland hanging between the scroll work. There's lots of cute little shops in Centralia now. Yeah, downtown Centralia. It's now almost all antique stores and little boutique shops. Yes. There's quite a few um, sort of cute coffee shops and little restaurants so you can take a break between your antique shopping. You know, th this is a pretty remarkable town. The length of the old district and all these historic buildings. It's really unique for Washington State. Yeah. It looks like everyone's setting up for Antique Fest, which is the festival that's happening this weekend. Okay. Yeah, Antique Fest, August 4th, 5th, and 6th. No, that's <laughs> you see that, the ornateness of the stonework? Yeah. Yeah, this was a bank. So in front of us is Centralia's historic train station. And it's still an Amtrak stop. 
So you could ride the train from Seattle or Portland or pretty much wherever Amtrak runs and come to Centralia. Originally the Central Union Depot, the Great Northern Railroad constructed the station for its use as a passenger and freight depot in 1912. Want to take a peek inside? Yeah, let's go in. Look, this is a photograph of a Pacific modern design train as seen passing through Centralia March 27th, 1934. Look at the, the engine shape. It does look really modern. Being in here has little changed since the early 1900s. Yeah. About 20 years ago, they were redoing Tower Street, the, uh, redoing these intersections the way you see them now. And they had excavated down a foot or so, and you could see the original trolley tracks from when a uh, trolley ran the entire length of Tower Street. This uh, cafe called Don's Delectables is really good. In front of us is the Olympic Club. It's now a hotel, a theater where you can eat and drink, and then the Olympic Club bar and a pool room. Originally, this was a brothel above the Olympic Club, and it, the brothel was for the gentlemen that uh, were members of the Olympic Club. It was a gentlemen's only club. The Olympic Club was built in 1910 and decorated in the Art Nouveau style. Look here, it says, ladies patronage not solicited. No minors allowed. 
So you're not supposed to go in here. <laughs> I think I can go in. Look at the original kind of Art Nouveau. I love the Art details. Nouveau. I like the fans at the top. Yeah, the belt-driven fans. Mm -hmm. And then here's the pool room. My memory is there were maybe four snooker tables in here and a couple pool tables, but when McMinimins bought the Olympic Club, they removed all but one of the snooker tables. I think this is a snooker table right here. Yeah. So. And the other ones are pool. I think under this rug is a hatch that takes you down to. Like their like cellar. Like a speakeasy. A speakeasy. From the 1920s or 30s when prohibition was going on. The speakeasy is an urban legend that I remember hearing years ago. I've actually never been down there. Maybe it was something to do with bootlegging. Yeah, it's just the same old original wood floor. So this was the card room. Some old pictures of the Olympic Club back in the day. So I've been told that the bar came from, the back of the bar came from Germany. I think it did, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It would be remiss of us to visit Centralia, but not have a discussion on the Centralia Massacre. So behind us here you see the Sentinel, and that is a statue that was put up uh, to commemorate the, the massacre of four World War I veterans that were shot on a parade in 1919 on Armistice Day. And then the aftermath of that was pretty chaotic and somewhat sinister for the town. We're going to do our best to give a brief explanation about that. I am not an expert on the Centralia Massacre. This is a summary of the events as I understand them. I recommend reading Wobbly War, The Centralia Story by John McClelland Jr for a full account of the events leading up to and the massacre itself. The Centralia Massacre took place on November 11th, 1919. Apparently, encouraged by local lumber barons, American legionnaires who returned from World War I to find their jobs taken by pro-union members of the International Workers of the World allegedly used the Armistice Day Parade as cover to attack the IWW Hall. The Legionnaires broke from the parade and stormed the hall. There are mixed reports as to who fired first, but IWW workers led by Wesley Everest engaged and killed four Legionnaires. Another account says the Legionnaires were shot by IWW members as the parade marched past the IWW Hall and another account states that one of the legionnaires was shot from a gunman on Seminary Hill. The end result, four legionnaires were dead, Wesley Everest was captured, jailed and then lynched, and other IWW members were jailed. The tale of the lynching is quite gruesome. 
As the story goes, in the middle of the night, a vigilante mob formed outside of the jailhouse. The power was cut. They grabbed Everest and took him across town to the Mellon Street Bridge over the Chehalis River, where he was castrated and hung. The ramifications of the event included a trial that attracted national media attention, turning Wesley Everest into a martyr for the IWW, the construction of the Sentinel statue, and a mural of Wesley Everest. Well, that was our video on Historic Centralia. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out the Historic Train Station we're standing on the platform. And speaking of trains, if you live in Portland or Seattle, it's an easy train ride to just the downtown Centralia, and there's even some hotels in the vicinity. So if you want to come do some antiquing, this is a great place. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment on this video, and please subscribe to this channel.